charity has to say, am I fulfilling what the donors hope for? Am I doing it better than other charitable organizations are doing? And therefore, have I earned continuing charitable support from, from, from the donors? The government doesn't have to worry about a bottom line of delivering the goods. And therefore, they mismanage these programs for the poor, for the elderly, far less effectively, with far less positive results than if in the long run it was done by the private char sector of charity and philanthropy. Let me show you a vibe, as they say in, 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 in the Bahamas. The National Insurance Board has been very uh, instrumental in building clinics, fun funding health care facilities mm -hmm. to improve the standard of health in the Bahamas. As a matter of fact, it uh, has the largest savings eh? in, in the country. Mm -hmm. And the government is borrowing mm -hmm. from the National Insurance Board. Mm -hmm. Uh, for certain mm -hmm. social programs and, and, and infrastructural programs. In your estimation, that is wrong? In the long run, yes, because you, th the implication is if uh, the government wasn't building hospitals and clinics, if it wasn't building retirement homes, then everyone would be sick, lying in the street without a doctor or a bed to lie in during an emergency and, and be in the, in the gutter waiting to die in their old age. That's absurd. The private sector would be, what did the world do before these national health and other programs? People took care of themselves. Many they relied people, upon their families. Many people they suffered. They, pe people suffered and people because su they waited on the private sector who, uh, and the private sector is driven by profits. You want, listen, if, if you read the history of societies that have relied more on private charity in the past, you discover the, the immense success that they've had with this. Uh, in Great Britain itself, during its laissez-faire century of limited government in the 19th century, uh, where there were no welfare programs to speak of, had a vibrant growth of charity, of philanthropy. It was a burst of this. In fact, in the, by the end of the 19th century, before the welfare state, there was more private charity in Great Britain than the bu entire budgets of some European governments. But Dr. Dr. Evelyn. And that was through private giving and before charitable deductions on taxes. Dr. Evelyn, let's say I agree with your argument. Thank you. No, 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 no for arguments, I agree with your argument. Okay. Tell me one place where, where your argument has worked. Where has it worked? Yeah. It has made the West rich. No, where has it worked? Where has it worked? Your argument. Great Britain, the United States. You know, Great okay. Britain? Historically. Mm, you know, the, the British pay more taxes the, than, the, than, today, than the Bahamians? I'm, I'm talking about the history of what... If you go back in a time machine 200 years, 300 years, Europe and America was as primitive as our images sometimes of third world countries. Poverty stricken, wallowing in filth, that was the entire world. What made the Western countries begin the process of escaping from poverty was government getting more and more out of the way and allowing private initiative, market forces, and individuals being allowed to keep the wealth that they created to use for themselves and to reinvest and create the jobs and the industries and the innovations that have given us what we call modern civilization. If governments had attempted to do 300 years ago what governments do today off the fat of capitalism, we would have never had prosperity and we would all be that image of third world countries today. There would be nobody that was middle class or rich. So you see Free hands have created all that we have. That is government getting out of the way. And what has happened over the last hundred years is that after all of this productive achievement of capitalism, it's being reversed. This is a reactionary counter-revolution of those who wish to have privilege and favor like the old lords of the manor under feudalism or corrupt politicians like kings of the past wanting to manage and control our lives. It's a counter-revolution against the real meaning of freedom. That's the tragedy of the last hundred years. But you don't think that the, 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 the world needs an economic order? Um, we heard of, of the New World Economic Order, and I think now the G20 countries are putting in place uh, a particular 
uh, order of things so that uh, we do not have another meltdown as we had this time. Uh, isn't that the responsibility of the government? We do to, to have a well-ordered society? Yes. Or a well-ordered world? Yes, and, the, and governments can assure a well-ordered world if it does its job, as I've said before. Do its job of protecting our life, our liberty, and our property. Not regulating, not mismanaging, not causing these boom and bust cycles through mismanagement of the monetary systems as our central banks have done. In other words, the world order needs to be based upon property rights, contract, and free competition. And that will give stability and prosperity. Not governments telling you how to manage your business or me how to live my life or denying you the financial opportunity to plan your own old age. But, 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 but Dr. Everett, you, 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 in some ways, want an egalitarian society. I mean, we, we, we live in a world where, where, the, where the world itself is divided between the weak and the strong for various reasons. And, 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 and the strong will always manhandle the weak. That is the advantage of a free enterprise capitalist system. With market forces. Because the price he is... He wants ma let market forces prevail, as they say. Yes, because you see the thing is where government manages things, those who have political power and influence will maintain their positions of status and wealth at the expense of newcomers. The beauty of the free market is that with everyone having only impartial, equal rights before the law, everyone has a chance to try. Everyone has a chance to improve. No one can run to the state and say, protect me from the innovator, protect me from the competitor. Just think of in the United States, the entire uh, computer industry. People that we all know, sort of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, who, who've made these mega fortunes in the high tech and computer uh, industry. They started out with no wealth. Neither of them actually even finished college. But the, the, the degree to which economic liberty existed in the United States gave those people with no status, no position, no family inheritance to have that good idea that others probably laughed at originally, and they've made our life better and improved themselves as individuals. But, but Dr. Everett, how do you account for the fact that, that, that 500 years ago, the Europeans went to Africa and exploited our people? Exploited got its riches to improve itself, and the people whom they exploited were left in poverty. And that poverty has permeated 500 years of society. Now, how are you come for that? Okay, the first of all, men have exploited and plundered each other everywhere. It's not just Europeans plundering Africans. The fact is, if you read ancient history, the Chinese would conquer people and plunder them. Greeks would fight Greeks and enslave the defeated people. The Romans conquered other Europeans and enslaved them and plundered them. Unfortunately, slavery is an equal opportunity industry. It doesn't care what your race or your background is. What ended the system of plunder and exploitation? Slowly but surely, not everywhere at the same time, and not, with a lot of not without a lot of inconsistency and hypocrisy, is that slowly but surely men gave up the political means to acquire wealth and shifted to the peaceful exchange market means of acquiring wealth. There is no plunder when men must deal with each other based upon free exchange. Plunder and corruption occur when one man can force another to work for him or to give what he has, either explicitly or implicitly, at the point of a gun. That is government power. In, in the United States, um, it is said that the Obama administration is moving towards socialism. You support that view? I think that the tragedy of it is that what the Obama administration seems to be moving towards uh, is a peculiar hybrid form of economic fascism. Now, why do I say That's fascism? even worse. Yes. But, you know, fascism is a loaded term, but it does have a meaning in economic history. How did Mussolini organize the Italian economy, let's say, of the 1920s, when he introduced what he called fascism? He didn't nationalize the means of production like the Russians did under communism. No, he just imposed layer after layer of government controls and regulations and mandates so that you still had private property on paper, but the government basically, through its rules, regulations, controls, told private businessmen what you could produce, how you could produce. For whom could you sell the product? What wages and work conditions were you required to provide? 
In other words, it was just a planned collectivist economy.